What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode for Mr. Gray's Talk Room. I'm your host, obviously, Christian Gray. Today, I'm going to teach you the very soft core way on how to get your sexual dominance back. And <clears throat> in this particular episode, it was something that I've been thinking about in the background. I wanted to do a bit of a reaction video. So this is going to be one, obviously, my first reaction video. And I remember seeing this podcast and I'm thinking to myself, like, this woman is sexually deprived. I don't care what you think. If you're opposed to my view, I genuinely do not give a fuck. But if, and I've dealt with women like this, dealt with women who people would call her a misandrist or misandrist, whatever you want to call it. If they are very vocal, if they are trying to prove a point and their point makes no sense, they are just trying to ex like just express their voice for whatever reason, I, I would genuinely believe that she, she was oppressed, that some, some man fucked her up or some man did not dick her down right. Uh, because a lot of the things that she says in this video... And it is a video with Andrew Tate. It's just, it, it, it's nonsense. So let's go ahead, watch this video together, and then I'll give you my thoughts. And if your woman, your spouse, your fiance, your girlfriend, your situationship, your fuck buddy, I don't care. If for whatever reason they start giving you this type of attitude, this type of back talk, you need to dick her down right. The problems outside of the bedroom stem from inside the bedroom. But there's a there's little bit of overlap here with that phrase. But let's go ahead and watch this first, and then we'll get into it. Love so, it. Can we break point. it down? Take, can Wait, we break okay, it down? I... Does loving mean that you listen to what I have to say and also think about what I want and not just what you want? It's not about Is that, that what loving it, means? It, if that's it, I can I can subscribe to that. But okay. I'm not gonna subscribe to you. Right. Sit down and you have to sit down. It's not what? about that. It's I'm about... a grown ass woman. I pay my own bills and you're gonna tell me what to do. That's fine. But it gets to a point. <laughs> it gets to a point where you have to sit and analyze the scenario you're in and try and realize and pick your battles. And I'm telling you. You may not realize it, but a man does a whole bunch of shit for you mm. he, that you don't know. He's watching the shows you want to watch. He's listening to you talk gossip about the girls at uh. work. He's fucking going, yeah, I like that dress, that dress. He doesn't give a fuck about any of it. He's doing it for you, See, that's the but the second thing, it's back the other yeah. way, nah. you have some fucking issue with he's autonomy. Right. It's he's bullshit. right. Listen, it's, yeah, he's right, because I, women, I, I women a, talk I, nonsense I, for a long time. Have, I, I and they say, like, yeah, babe, you're right. Yeah, babe, can't believe she did I, that. I, it's true, babe. Oh, yeah, that show is good. Yeah, babe. Yeah, it's true. You so become I'm a friend. Yeah, I agree. It's men true. do a lot, but women do of a lot, course. too. As much as my... If my man caters to me, I will do anything to make him happy. If he says, oh, babe, I want to... I like this meal. I will, I will make sure I can cook it for him because guess what? He actually cares about what I want as well. You can't just have a one-way relationship. It's not one way. I'm just saying. You I'm gave just it commenting. Ways. I'm just saying. If I was a woman and I had to make a man as attracted to me as possible, my goal would be to give that man status and make him feel good about himself. Okay. There is a lot to take with this woman. I swear, like. I know, I know Andrew Tate, <laughs> I'm laughing right now because I want to do exactly what Andrew Tate did. Slap her across the face, grab her by the neck, shut up bitch, sex now. Like, <laughs> I'm being, I'm being facetious and I understand that the, he has a character that he plays and, but when I see this type, these type of women... Women that I've been with in the past that they just, oh, they are not being dicked down right. I am thinking to myself, one, I refuse to, I generally refuse to be in a relationship like this. Like I would not even consider being in a relationship with a woman like this. I, I don't care. She doesn't claim to be traditional the way she does. She wants to be a, she's a feminist, a misandrist. 
she sexist, bigot, and of course this is all based in my opinion. I'm I'm like <laughs> like slap, grab her by the neck, shut a bitch, sex now. I just I can't. So moving forward, um, I want to introduce this video as why BDSM works. Now I'm not talking about sadism or masochism. I'm not talking about in the weeds, bondage, dominance, or bondage, discipline, dominance, submissive. I'm not talking about that entirely, but as a man, you have to be sexually dominant. And I say this wholeheartedly because I, I'm repulsed at men who are cuckolds. Like it's just, it's, it's just, it's a repulsion to me in terms of my manhood. I, I hey, look, whatever you do in your sexual life, that's entirely up to you. But still, at the end of the day, I think that's a bit of an embarrassment. But to each their own. I'm not judging. But what I am saying is you have to be sexually dominant in the bedroom. And let's kind of bring it back to where things start. The way I introduced BDSM into my life, it really stems from... It's not about pain it's about pleasure but it's about when you have a woman completely submit to you and again there's levels to it when you have a woman completely submit to you in the bedroom meaning you're trying to explore your sensuality and you're trying to explore have her explore her sensuality you're going to push some soft limits hard limits the whole thing is about consent and i'm actually going to show you how to do this appropriately, but there's there's a lot of pre premises that we have to take into consideration. Vanilla sex, missionary, doggy, you know, blow her back out, get in, get out, get off. That's cool and all, but at one point it does become redundant, in my opinion. And you have to spice things up. Like if you've lost lust, and again, there's affection, compassion, love, but if you've lost sexual desire from your partner or maybe things died out just because you probably have to plan sex or, or probably things, it's just very redundant. Everything, it doesn't even become an experience. It just becomes an action. It's like quickie, I just need to get a, get a nut off or whatever. I, I find that that's where you're losing your dominance outside of the bedroom and you need to regain that or sustain it in the bedroom. So... This fucking bitch. So we got a cat and she's very vocal, so fuck this shit. Go. <clears throat> Where the fuck was I? If... I don't even remember where the fuck I was at. Oh. <clears throat> so... If you are trying to get, like if things died out and you're trying to re-spark what's going on into the bedroom, you definitely do have to to start exploring your sensuality. Not your sexuality. I'm not telling you, and this is not to, to be a, a stab at the, you know, homophobic or not homophobic, the homosexual, uh, any type of thing, bisexual, pansexual, like whoever you... In, joy that's at your own volition what i'm saying is regardless of your partner you have to be able to explore their sensuality meaning the way they sexually express themselves um and there's kind of levels to this the way i've introduced this is i will have vanilla sex with a woman one time any woman that I sleep with, I will have vanilla sex the first time that I meet. I'm not trying to like fucking go hardcore in any capacity because they don't know me or they may, be not, may not be willing enough to do that with me just because the relation in of itself, it's too premature. But again, women are the gatekeepers to sex. And the minute that I have sex with them, it's the balls in my court. Now I can choose to sustain that relationship or not. And generally what I do is, hey, this was fun, had a good time, um, but I don't believe I can have sex with you again. And I generally tell them um, after 
things are finished and they're like, why? Whatever goes on in our head, there's a lot that goes in. It, it could be insecurity. It could be uh, an assurance. But what I do is I create tension in the conversation that, hey, this was fun, but I can't sustain this. And I've always introduced that I am a dominant. I, I, I ex do BDSM type of things. Um, <clears throat> and so this was fun while it lasted, but I, I wouldn't be able to continue a relationship with that. At that point, because she's already submitted to me se sexually in the bedroom the first time, she has the option. And the ball's back in her court. She can either choose, well, I want to explore my sensuality or, you know what, that's that's not about me. And that's perfectly fine. I've, I've had more losses in that capacity, but the very few women that I've had as my submissive, things turned for the best until, and, and I'm telling you the mistakes that I made, so don't make the same mistakes. Or make, if you're currently making this mistake, how do, how do we get that back? I... There, and, and, and I think it's very important. There's, and, and you have to look back at this, especially if you're in a relationship right now. There are women that I have sex with and there are women that I sleep with. The women I have sex with are very different than the women that I want to wake up next to. And I find that the emotional connection. I find that trust. The trust that she gives to me to sexually submit to me wholeheartedly, genuinely, it's all consensual. I will give that back for... An emotional connection but in the capacity that I am the dominant and she chooses to be my submissive and we talk about soft limits hard limits safe words she needs to know that she is giving up the responsibility and, a, and a, she's giving up responsibility in the bedroom and trusting me that no matter what happens I will not do anything that she does not want to do and what that does is have her genuinely submit to you as a person in the relationship. So after things are done, and this is how things stem from there. At that point, because she's already sexually submitted to me outside of the bedroom, let's say we're in public. If she ever decides to act up or if she decides to give me attitude, she is going to have a hard time. Not to say that she may be in the right or she may be in the wrong. She's not going to question my decisions that I make about anything. Damn near 100% or I'll say 99.9% 99 .9 like Germex. Because she's already submitted to me in, in a capacity that she's never done to another guy. Now, I will tell you this. Depending on the type of partner you have, if they've had multiple partners... If they've had very few partners, I will tell you that there is a, a silver lining of I've had the virgin and I've had a very promiscuous woman. I found that the one in the middle that had a few partners, but she wasn't as promiscuous as I'll say the sloop or the promiscuous woman, that was a soft spot. Because, of course, you know, virgins, you're literally uh, taking, not taking away. You're, you're, you're literally <clears throat> giving the opportunity for this woman to start exploring her sensuality. Now, if she chooses to sleep with other men or multiple men after me, that's her own volition. But again, that's one thing. And if she's done that before she even comes in, that's a totally different thing. But the soft spot is where, you know, they've had sex with, you know, very few partners, but it's not the same capacity as, as she wants to explore with me. That, that, that's the soft spot. So I'm not going to really talk about body count because it kind of talks about it in of itself. The way that I would introduce this is... Two very simple things. Tying her up, and I'm not talking about rope. You can tie her up with a necktie. And a necktie, what you can do is you can either bind her feet or bind her wrist. And obviously you can tell that I've used this fucking tie <laughs> quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> and the next thing that you would do is 
give her or put a blindfold on her. Um, you could use a headband. You could actually even use her own shirt, right? But what this does is it takes away her ability to, it takes away her ability and puts the responsibility in your hands. So you're guiding her how to gender, like sexually be submissive to you. And she's trusting you that you're not going to do anything to hurt her. And the reason why I use the the blindfold is because it creates a lot of anticipation that she does not anticipate. And how men get aroused or how men get off versus women get off, this is why I said uh, men and women are massively different. That's why uh, if you don't know what you're doing to get a woman off, it's rather difficult because for them to climax is ma ma massively different how men will climax. Men get off by penetration. Women get off by sensation and an experience. <clears throat> Even if it's a quickie, if you know what you're doing, you can get her off or get her a climax because they definitely want that emotional connection. Now, how this kind of all entails, before you could, before you could even um, consider this, you have to look at yourself as a man because, again, how you perform in the bedroom, if... Pro <clears throat> Problems with your women stem from within the bedroom. If you're not digging her down right, like, again, obviously this woman who decided to go off on, you know, oppression or whatever. I'm, I guarantee you she probably doesn't even know about men's oppression. She doesn't know that. I, or she's very ignorant about it, oblivious. But as a man, if you have all these things in order, like I talked in my last episode, your fitness, your finances, your philosophy your friends and family, meaning you cut out the poison, you cut out the toxicity, you're not spending your money on stupid shit, you have good fitness, you're not overly fat. Now, apparently everybody's BMIs is going to vary depending on how big, how tall you are, genetics, all that stuff. But I can wholeheartedly say when I was at my heaviest, which was 265, I'm about 235 right now. When I was at my heaviest at 265, my libido dropped. And I said this before and I'll say it time and time again. You have to get that shit back under control. Just like when you're peacocking, just like when you're taking yourself before you got in your relationship, you're working out, right? Because probably the last relationship put you in a fucking depression and you're like, you know what? Fuck that bitch. I'm going to get a six pack. I'm going to get abs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look good. Peacocking, right? Genuinely working on your fitness and your health, right? And then now you find this woman when you're in, in your physical prime and then you let that go because you two got too comfortable together. You're like, oh, you know, I don't have to go to, I don't have to go work out today because I want to spend time with with my uh, significant other. No bullshit. You have to still be disciplined in your fitness. You also have to be fit, uh, disciplined in your finances. So if you can, if even if you live together, or even if you're in a relationship, if you can only take her out once a week, depending on your budget, you know, if you're balling, that's fine. You only take her out once a week. Because you don't want to overspend and obviously as a man, if you're a traditional man like I am, I will pay for the first day. I will pay for the date. It's, I, will, I would rather cook with a woman or yeah, I would rather cook with a woman than constantly keep on going out and then destroy my finances when I had all this food that I bought. When I was worrying about my fitness, you know, getting, getting the salads, getting the spring mix getting the bananas, the apples, the oranges, the fruits, the vegetables, getting the protein in, instead of eating out at like Hop Dottie, and I'm not sponsored or anything like that. You, you don't want to do that to yourself where obviously if you're a traditional man and you're trying to you know keep on having, no, if you have to make the sacrifice or if you have to set the boundary, don't push back your boundaries. And I believe this is a lot, another thing where it stems from. You push back your boundaries because you got too comfortable. So you, the, no, the normal shit that you would have let slide when you first started dating, but now you've already gotten, I would say, complacent with each other and that's where things are rocky now. No, keep your boundaries in place. I, your bros will always be there for you. But, and it happened to me. And 
I don't know if you're a fan of the Peaky Blinders, but I remember when Tommy Shelby gets betrayed by his, his bartender, Paul, um, was it Polly? Polly, yeah. Polly, which is the aunt. She said, essentially in this, in this quote, she's like, there's only one thing a smart man like you can make you stupid. Essentially, that's, that's what she said. I'm fair. Or there's only, what the hell did she say? She said, there's only one thing in this world that will make you stupid or oblivious, and it's women. And that's essentially what happened uh, in, in, the, in the show. If you haven't watched it, The Peaky Blinders, uh, his bartender portrays him because she's like an undercover operative for, uh, I think, the Irish police. It's been a while since I've seen it. But essentially, he gets betrayed. And that's generally what happens is, and I've been guilty of it. I, I refuse to be guilty of that moving forward. I haven't been guilty of that. Like I've set my boundaries. I know my boundaries. If a woman wants to, uh, if, if I'll tell her I'm only available these dates because I do jujitsu and I train and I have a job and obviously I have this podcast for you guys. No, if I have to do something, I will do that and then I will attend to her. But I won't sacrifice my shit just to please her. No, she has to know that I'm a man. I have a vision. I know where I want to be. And she will respect that. But again, look back at where your boundaries are. And that's, that's why I talk about philosophy. And your friends and family too. If you have toxicity and that's causing you stress, unnecessary stress, gossiping, don't stop gossiping. It doesn't matter. If the relationship has nothing to fundamentally do with you, if it does not fundamentally affect you, then it's not your concern or it shouldn't be your concern to get involved. You're only going to cause yourself more stress because then you have to hear multiple voices or, you know, fuck this person, fuck that person, that cousin, that aunt, uh, that whatever relative. It doesn't matter. You don't need to cause yourself more stress than you already do. And as he said, men do so much for themselves and for the women that they're with that they don't even know about. So why are you going to cause yourself more stress? So your fitness, finances, philosophy, friends, family, then you take care of the females last. I know that sounds a little bit self-absorbed, but in order for you to take care of someone else, you got to take care of yourself first. That's not being selfish. That's being selfless. And there are some women that will try to gaslight you or turn it back around like, oh, why are you doing this, this, and this? Don't you care about me? No, bitch. I'm trying to take care of me to take care of us. So now that we talked about that and you're currently in this state where you're reflecting on where things went wrong, go ahead, write it down. I want you to brainstorm. I'm giving you some homework. Brainstorm where things went wrong. And then once you figure out like in what area that these issues are having, like I said, if you're busting too quick, then now when we explore into the bedroom as we get into it, things are going to finally make more sense. As you pushed back your boundaries and now you're tolerating more bullshit than you normally would. She's doing things that she didn't do during the cupcake stage. Well, the best way to do that after you've already fixed everything else, all right, let's go ahead and get into the bedroom. So, <clears throat> I want to create out this scenario, but the first thing that we have to do is I got to show you how to appropriately tie a woman up. So, I'd say, because it's all about the experience, if you're going to explore this, and I say this, exercise with caution, exercise with care. If you enter the world of BDSM, it's about consent, it's about pleasure, not pain, but it's definitely about, it's, it's literally giving her the opportunity to put back trust in you or an extensive amount of trust that she obviously didn't have before. Maybe she had it before, but she kind of lost that. This is how you're going to gain back in. So get a very expensive soap tie. I, I, I'm a big fan of always using ties first before rope because the reason why I'm not talking about rope is because I've seen stupid motherfuckers who watch Fifty Shades of Grey, and obviously there's that scene where he gets masking tape, rope, and zip ties, and they try to pull that same shit. No, dude, if you do not understand what type of rope to use, you can hurt your partner, and that's not what this is about. I've seen somebody use paracord. That is the worst thing. It's so fucking... 
harsh on your skin. It's ridiculous. So best way to start is a, is a necktie. So we start with the necktie. Imagine like you're going to put it on like a, like a simple four-handed knot. First thing you're going to do is you're going to get the wide end. From here, you're going to pull it up, pull it over the back of your hand, as you can see here. The next thing that you're going to do, you're going to flip your hand up and turn it over your other palm. You're going to use your fingers, and this is going to create um, kind of like a double, uh, like a bow tie. When you go here, you use your fingers, pull it through, and now you got your knot, your bow tie knot. From here, you can use it to bind her hands, tighten it. The cool thing about this is that you can tighten it um, enough to where you're not going to hurt your partner. It's not going to cut off her circulation, but it's, again, a very sexy way for her to give back or her to put back your control. So the minute that you do this, you're good to go. So now that we know how to put in a, you could use this on her feet, you could use this on her hands, you could tie them forward, you could, you could tie this behind her back, whatever you want to do. You can definitely use a blindfold. This is a headband, works very well. Um, I would also say if you're going to do this, uh, whether you get a headband, you could use a shirt, uh, you could use a bandana. I'd say if you want to make things very sexy, use a, sex, uh, use a very expensive silk tie because definitely the thought that counts is definitely the fact that you're investing into this. And get a silk, uh, get a silk, um, fuck. Can you, a silk blindfold. I don't know why I, I fucking lost my train of thought. Get a silk blindfold. Silk blindfold, silk tie. It's going to feel very good on her skin. She's not going to feel completely... Fuck, why did I lose that? She's not going to feel discomfort. I don't know why the fuck I'm losing my train of thought. I need a drink. <clears throat> but how, how are you going to introduce this? I advise you definitely to practice this type of knot 10, 15, 20 times because the, the fact that you're doing this, you have to do it with confidence. And also, I will say this, because confidence is definitely going to matter. The same confidence, the way that you got her, and the fact that y'all are probably exploring something new, blindfolding her and tying her hands in front or behind her back or even her ankles, you can use multiple, it doesn't matter. You have to be able to do this flawlessly. But going back to the woman, if obviously this may be her, this is definitely going to be her first time doing this if she hasn't done it before, you can't get frustrated because it's definitely your first time. It's like when you lost your virginity. This is going to be your first time, her first time. You can't get frustrated if things go wrong. And I'm going to tell you this. We're going to create the scenario. Now that we know how to, to do the tie, do the blindfold, I want to create a scenario. Let's say it's Friday night, whether you have kids or you don't have kids. If you have kids, fuck the kids. Give them to a babysitter, give them to grandma, give them to an aunt, give them some, get rid of the kids because this is your chance for redemption. Let's say you're at dinner and typical bullshit is happening. She's complaining, she's talking about whatever it is and <laughs> it's a very funny scenario, I'm laughing. She's talking about shit that you don't even care about because you have other shit that you're worrying about, but you already got all that shit taken care of, right? You're at dinner, you're talking about shit that matters, and let's say, I'm just going to be very blunt, it's, I'm, I'm laughing at it because it, it, it works, but it's very funny. She's talking about whatever bullshit and you say, you know what, I'm just going to use the word Kylie. I don't know why fucking Kylie sticks to my head. Kylie... After dinner's done, I want to fuck you into the middle next Tuesday. She's probably going to be tripped out. She's going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about, right? I'm like, you know what? I want to have a fun night tonight. We don't have the kids. Or if you don't have kids, I want to have a fun night tonight. I want to explore something. Do you trust me? She's most likely going to be very confused because you just blatantly told her <laughs> like you've seen those those facebook tiktok instagram reels where it's like the husband and the wife and they're like 
do you want to fuck? And she's like, not when you say it like that. And then you say, you want to fuck? No, this is a very dominant, sexy way to actually do it without it being awkward. She's going to be very confused. And what you're going to do is, I want to do something tonight that we haven't done before. And I need you to trust me. At that point, I guarantee you, 99.9%, .9 she's not even going to be worried about whatever bullshit that she was talking about. She's not going to be nagging at you for leaving the toilet seat up or leaving an underwear on the fucking bathroom floor or leaving your beard hair on the sink. She's Everything's out the window. Now, you've put in a sense of anticipation and anxiety. Not bad necessarily, but you, you put it in a way where it's like, I have no idea what to expect. Now, she may be, she may be very reluctant at first, but you're going to tell her, I'm like, I want to try something in the bedroom tonight. I want you to trust me. It's... Nothing too profound. It's just, I believe that with all this bullshit that we're dealing with, all the shit that you're telling me, I'm going to make things right. You don't tell her, I think I'm going to make things right. You tell her, I'm going to make things right. Because obviously at this point, you've lost your sexual dominance, right? That, that's why you're having all these problems that you normally wouldn't have had in the cupcake stage. So you take her home. You're done with dinner. You take her home. She may be trying to pry or anything like that. She's like, just trust me. You, you keep on telling her, just trust me. Nothing bad's going to happen. I'm going to try something. This is what's going to do. The minute that you go home, tell her to wash up and put on her most sexiest lingerie. Or you could tell her to just be fucking naked. It doesn't matter. Like You tell her what you want. You can have her... And, and there, there's, there's a bit of anticipation... And, and it, it, it's, I've done this time and time again, and it works. You tell her what I want you to do. Go to the bathroom, wash up. If you have to shower, go ahead and do that. Put on your sexiest lingerie. I want you to either be naked or I want you to be in your sexiest lingerie. And I have a few things that I want you to do. You could tell her to sit at the bed. You can tell her to sit on a chair. You can, if, if you want to get even more sexy, you can get um, definitely a body pillow and say, I want you at the corner of the bed kneeling on this pillow. And you would have, you would have already had that pillow. You, already, you probably would have, if you do this, you probably would have bought in a body pillow. And she doesn't have a note because obviously this is something that you've been planning. And you tell her, I want you kneeling, ready to go, but ensure to put on this, uh, ensure to not come out of the room the minute that you go into the room because you obviously as a man have to mentally prepare to be able to explore your sensuality the way that you're going to give back get back your dominance and this is something that i've done time and time again get your phone i'm gonna share my ultimate sex playlist there's numerous songs that can set the mood you can have her keep a closet light on you can have her light the candles, whatever you want to do, whatever that you need to do as a man to set the tone, put on candles, put on uh, low light. Um, if just I want you to explore this with, with yourself and her. Once you're ready, you go into the room, mood set, music set. She may, she may be confused like, babe, what is going on? It's like, I just need you to trust me. So the first thing that you do is you get your blindfold, you put it on her. Doesn't matter. She's on the chair, she's kneeling, she's at the edge of the bed. Doesn't matter. You put this. She's probably going to be a, a little bit confused. She's like, what the hell is going on? It's like, I want to try something that I believe is going to get us back. Once you blindfold her and... You tie her hands, and I would advise, you know, just because the back, uh, tying her hands behind her back may be a little bit too much, tie her hands forward. She's like, you tie her hands. She's like, what are you doing? She's like, it's okay. Just trust me. At that point, after you've set the tone, set the mood, set the setting, she's blindfolded, um, <clears throat> you're laying her down. What you need to understand with this is you need to expand your foreplay. Like you can't just go ahead and just 
bareback, raw dog, and just like go at it. No, because she's very nervous about what's to happen. You explore her body. And I talked about this in the back. You need to arouse her pressure points. It, you need to caress her breasts. You need to get her in the mood and expand your foreplay. Arouse the clit. You know, if you have to finger her, finger her. And I, I find using ice, and this is a little trick, and yes, I actually stole this from the movie and it works. Get you a bowl of ice and start using that to kind of arouse her and get her in this thing because you're literally putting cold ice on her body. She's like, what the hell is going on? And if she ever gets uncomfortable, before you even start, the first thing that you need to say, yellow means caution, you have safe words, red means stop. Because you have to put in mind, she's literally giving you this trust that she ha probably has, hasn't done before. And you would tell her, as you're expanding your foreplay, you tell her, the safe words are yellow, which means caution. Safe words, red is stop. And the reason why I'm telling you to expand her foreplay is because as you're getting into the mood, as you're doing that, whether she does say yellow or she doesn't say red, the scenario generally plays out is she's at that point sexually submitting to you whether you have her hands tied whether you have them uh, to the back she's doing that there's a there's a very silver lining here let's say you've aroused her for play for five minutes straight and i generally try to use one or two songs to be able to time myself the most sexiest thing and most sexually dominant thing that you can say at that point is, are you okay? She will say yes, most of the time. She may say no, or she may say, I don't know. She says, just no, you could always say red or yellow. And at that point, however you want to sexually dominate her, you got the green light. And you can take back your sexual dominance just doing those two little things. And I know I was kind of going into this hypothetical situation, but I need you to understand that she's going to have no clue. At that point, no matter what happens, whether she hits a hard limit, she says red, or maybe she says caution, and you kind of have to back step and say, everything's okay. We're good, we're good to go. And you're reassuring her at this time. And I'll say, you know, 10, 15 minutes, another five, 10 minutes, you know, you climax, she may or may not have not climaxed. After that first round is done, it's the conversation afterwards. I have yet to experience a situation where they were not sexually satisfied where, because I sexually dominated them. You know, how, how, however shit the relationship was, I've yet to have a woman tell me that was the worst experience ever. And I will tell you this, and this is why I say, if she's telling you yellow or anything like that, don't keep exploring the stuff that she's saying yellow about. Whatever it is that you're doing to her, whatever foreplay that you're doing. When she says red, you say stop. And you stop. At that point, you can remove the blindfold. You may have like this very unsure, awkward conversation for about a minute or two. And she may say, what the hell are you doing? Like, what is this? You just tell her, this is something that I want to explore. Do you want to continue exploring it to me? And at that point, again, it's all consensual. She will say yes, she will say no. And then <clears throat> if you have to untie her, definitely untie her. But if she doesn't, it's in the fucking bag. You got your fucking manhood back. And now you can start exploring in whatever avenue that you want. And you start making this particular type of sex, not a quickie, not get in, get out, get off, not blow out her back. You can make this type of sex and experience something that now she can look forward to. And we'll get to this in to, to later episodes, but the reason why I'm creating these scenarios for you is because you have to understand is if you're having problems outside the bedroom, it's stemming from in the bedroom. And the reason why I tell you to expand your foreplay because if you buzz quick, you know, you need to prepare for round two. 
But regardless, I guarantee you, she's probably gonna ha- she's probably gonna climax. She's probably gonna orgasm if she never called stop. If she did call stop, you just tell her. I'm like, this is something that I want to explore, and she may or may not be uncomfortable with it. Majority of the time, they're always comfortable with it as long as you know that because you're guiding them and you're giving them, and you're not getting mad because she's you know red or she's that. It's about getting your manhood back. So. As you've explored this first encounter, you've gotten your manhood back. The next, the the next part is it's up to you. You know, you can have your planned sex and if it's planned sex, which is, I think the worst fucking shit ever. um, Now you have something to look forward to at that point, you know, you can tie her down, blindfold her. But again, as I said in the beginning, women are based on sensation versus men who are based on penetration massively massively different so when you make things an experience and not an action that arouses her to a point if she hasn't been aroused in that capacity before to something that she can now explore so what's the aftermath of this let's say everything goes 100 percent. you've had no problems which i generally hope for you to have no problems, but problems are always gonna arise. And as as I said in the beginning, exercise with caution and care and consent. The fact that she has sexually submitted to you in a way that she hasn't before, if she tries to bitch at you again, well, it's gonna be really hard for her too. No matter how vocal she is or expressive she is, it's gonna be really hard for her too because if you make this like like a very normal thing, which, you know, so point of BDSM. Um, <laughs> she knows what to expect. And the fact that, you know, this first encounter was very soft core, it was very skinamax, it wasn't like on the hub. She knows like if you're smacking her ass a type of way, you're grabbing her by the neck. And I'm not saying choking, I'm just saying on not at the trachea, but on the neck, and you're slowing the, the blood and oxygen to her brain, giving her the sensation, and not the point that she's going to pass out, just the sensation like, hey, I'm in control. Uh, I've yet to see, I've yet to experience any problems outside of the bedroom after that first experience, because now it, you, you're exploring different avenues that you haven't before, and it's one of the most beautiful things that you can do, because now you've literally just re-glued whatever rocky relationship that you currently have. And and I say this because there's a very funny, uh, not qu- I'll say quote, but from American Pie with uh, Stifler, and, uh, not Stifler, it's uh, with um, uh, Ben's dad? Yeah, Ben. And, uh, or is it Ben? I can't remember. Jim, Jim's dad. So Jim and Jim's dad, where... <laughs> they talk about sex. I think it was uh, the third movie, American Wedding, and uh, Jim's dad pretty much saying, like, why do you think we sent you to uh, Jewish school? Like, we were fucking Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, every day, twice a day, all that stuff, um, because it was the first time he was getting married, or I think it was maybe an American reunion, um, because obviously, if you look at American Reunion, and it's comedy, if, you, if you're, I shit you not, look at American Wedding and American Reunion, that's probably all the problems that you're experiencing, um, You have to be able to be consistent with sex. And for any woman that uses sex against you, you need to remind her that you can easily, the the way that she viewed you as a high value man in the cup six stage, you have to remind her that I am still a high value man and I can get another woman. I won't care about her. I could fuck her. Fine, whatever. I still love you, but she needs to be reminded that. And of course, women, average women can date a, you know, fucking NFL star, NBA player. We know that, but... If you're that high value man, the reason why she got with you in the first place, because it's the law of scarcity, meaning that you're a good man or you have good values, you treat her well, she needs to be reminded of that if that's in the current situation that you are. So I hope you got a lot of value out of this episode because this is the type of avenue that I want to explore. Of course, I'll probably have other topics to talk about, uh, definitely with your career, definitely with your finances. Uh, definitely with your mental health, but I generally wish you and your partner the best. 
And if you find that you see this episode very beneficial, please, by all means, subscribe, comment. Uh, let me know if, if you had a bad experience. You don't have to put it in the comment section. You can send me a direct message. I can kind of guide you in that capacity. Uh, but before any motherfucker tries to say that I'm a misogynist or a sexist or a bigot or anything like that, BDSM is about consent and care and caution. I'm just going to leave it at that. So if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, at the Christian Gray. Um, you can also follow me on YouTube and Rumble, Mr. Gray's Talk Room. And until next time, guys, stay tuned. Take care. I wish you the best. And let's get back your sexual dominance.